Hello. Um, I work at uh, Energy in Betten. It's uh, just a few uh, hours drive north of here. And um, our activities center mostly around the, the reactor that we have, the high flux reactor. In, uh, and um, since about 2014, 15, um, we started working on molten salt reactors. So before that, we have been working on uh, transmutation of minor actinides. Uh, high temperature reactors, lifetime extension of, of current reactors. So we do have a lot of experience in the, in, in the field of uh, nuclear fuel irradiations and nuclear materials qualifications, but um, only since a few years uh, in, in molten salt reactors. So what we are trying to do is, is build up uh, knowledge and know-how uh, in, in this area. And in the end, uh, NRG is a nuclear service provider, so we also, of course, want to sell our services. I am from the research department doing research that is government funded. So for the purpose of this talk, we are um, uh, an R&D uh, institute. So um, the Dutch have a, a nuclear energy program running already for tens of years, I think. And, uh, since uh, 2015, we have added the molten salt technology to this uh, program, and it fits very well because uh, it, the program is uh, based on things like safety improvements and contributing to a CO2-free energy uh, market. And what we believe is that the molten salt reactor is sort of, at least on paper, sort of the ultimate uh, clean and safe reactor. So we want to uh, contribute to this um, to realizing this uh, technology. So what we do is we, we collaborate. We are only a small company, so we, we, we want to collaborate. And, uh, we work with the JRC, the European uh, uh, Research Institute, with the Technical University in Delft, and also with uh, RES, uh, the, the Czech uh, National Research Institute. So we, we only can do a small piece of the, the big puzzle, and we focus on material qualification and, and fuel testing. So what we want to do is to oper gain operational experience, to look at the safety, to confirm fission product stability. So you already heard from Jan Lane that uh, what we intend to do is to look at the safety of cesium and iodide, for instance, in, in salts, the stability. And what we can do is to irradiate salts, bring them to uh, Karlsruhe, to the JRC, where they can do these tests. We are interested in material qualification, so materials suffer from neutron radiation and also from uh, corrosion by the salt and fission product influences. Uh, we also have to find a waste route because we are going to produce waste. And that if you do experiments, you create waste. So we add to our, um, our program uh, a way to deal with the waste. And we start very conservatively, simply trying to find an aqueous route, so dissolution in, in, in water and exchange with, uh, with other uh, uh, chemical groups to make oxides and uh, cementable waste. Uh, of course, for larger fuel um, samples, that is not possible anymore because you will generate a lot of extra waste if you add water. So we have to find other ways as well. And, oh yeah, last but not least, integral demonstration. That was the loop that you have heard uh, before of. So we have now a program consisting of a few uh, irradiations in the reactor. Also a gamma irradiation of fuel salts, because uh, well, maybe not many people know that at room temperature, um, these salts can radiolize and you can produce uh, fluorine gas. Now, mm -hmm. almost none of these, uh, these molten salt reactors, uh, they will not ha have salt uh, at room temperatures, but uh, you still need to know for waste storage or maybe for severe accidents, what happens if your salts cool down to room temperature? How big is this problem of radiolysis? So we also do a, a gamma radiolysis test inspired by work at Oak Ridge, <laughs> which you, uh, many of the things that we do, uh, you can see sort of analogs in, in what uh, Oak Ridge was doing in the, in the 60s, I think. So. Um, and uh, yeah, we have a couple of dreams in the, in the bottom to do purification by helium bubbling. We are working on that now out of pile with uh, Delft, and later we want to bring that into the reactor to do uh, uh, live uh, removal of, uh, of fission products. Okay, so the focus is on uh, radiation technology, generic topics, not really for one particular reactor design, and uh, 
yeah, we have an ambitious program, but with limited funding, so uh, we need partners. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. Well, there was already uh, quite a lot on the loop. Um, it will contain about 20 to 25 liters of salt. Uh, we will have an alloy N or similar first containment. Uh, we know that in, in China, CNAP is now fabricating this alloy in, in larger volumes, so maybe you can make use of that. Um, we've also been talking to Haynes. Uh, the power is about uh, 125 kilowatts. Um, we wanted to make a one megawatt loop, uh, but it turns out that the heat exchanger is too large for our infrastructure because we, of course, the, the, one of the biggest challenges of making this, realizing this loop is to get rid of it after you have operated it. So you, you need to take care that you can cut it up in pieces and, uh, and, and uh, move it to waste. And for that, we have certain hot cells with limitations. The heat exchanger tends to be large. So we have kept the power down to 125 kilowatts, but um, the main thing in any case is that you have the right power density and flow um, and temperature, uh, delta T, let's say the, the temperature difference over your system. Uh, the, the total amount of power that you create is, is relatively less important. And as we said, uh, we can, can put this uh, loop into the pool side facility of our reactor where we can move it towards and from the reactor to start it and stop the system. That's a nice uh, safety feature as well. If something happens, you can remove the power and uh, shut it down nicely, even without removing, uh, shutting down the reactor, which is, um, we would not like to make the, the other operation of our entire reactor dependent on the operation of the loop. So, that's, um, so about our current activities, they're mainly smaller tests, so with smaller amounts of salts, and uh, material radiation to look at aging. Um, the salient one uh, is the, we call it salient salt irradiation experiment. It's a simple uh, acronym. Uh, small capsules of salt. In the first one, salient one, is the, the capsules are made of graphite. Um, we knew that graphite is compatible with the salt. We wanted to get started quickly, so we made graphite crucibles. The other thing that we could do most quickly is to just do thorium with lithium. It doesn't contain fuel, so you will not have fuel power initially. And you see that um, by the, uh, the, the picture in the bottom right corner, that you start with a very low power from simulation is this, and uh, increase the power over time by producing uh, uranium-233. So we have to wait a little bit before you get to full power. Um, the salt was produced in Karlsruhe. The people at the JRC in Karlsruhe are experts in, in, in salt purification and analysis. So uh, they also did the loading of the crucibles. We did assembly design of the, of the rig. And uh, it's now uh, in the reactor for some time. So it's already for more than a year doing not so much, producing some power and, uh, and aging. Um, and what you can see here is the, the uh, measured uh, power increase. You can see that the red circles show that if you have a reactor shut down and you wait a little bit longer, then uh, the power suddenly goes up a lot, and that is by the protactinium decay, so it's all as you would expect. So, If you have short reactor stops, there's not so much of increase in power. If you have long reactor stops, you have a larger jump. Uh, the reactor of the, this experiment uh, seems to behave as we wanted it. Um, now we're working, at the meantime, we're working on the next irradiation So That's uh, number uh, three. The second one was uh, very similar to salient one. We had some issues, then we decided not to do it and instead focus on something uh, a bit more uh, exciting to us. And we wanted to do um, uh, corrosion tests. So uh, we have now uh, Hastelloy N-type crucibles, also uh, the Chinese uh, alloy. Uh, we also added uh, plutonium to the fuel salt to st immediately start with uh, uh, fissile material and to get burn up faster. And um, we intend to, uh, in addition to look again at the fission product uh, release, now we want to look at non-isothermal uh, salt uh, corrosion system. A little bit like a loop, but then inside a small uh, capsule. 
because if you generate power in the salt, then you get uh, um, convection, free convection, and you can use that to, uh, to look at temperature gradient effects. At the same time, we will be building up fission gases uh, and, uh, and, and uh, fission products, and we can see what the influence of that uh, is. So uh, in about half a year, we uh, are ready to start that, I think. It's the design. What we also did is we added heaters to the design, because in the first um, experiment, the samples cooled down to near room temperature if you shut your reactor down. And because of the issue of radiolysis, you then get uh, quality assurance problems. Uh, if you want to get data on, on good salts, then you need to make sure that no radiolysis happens during your experiment. So in Salient 3, we want to do that in a better way. As soon as we turn down the reactor, um, we will turn on the heaters and keep the salt at a certain temperature, above 150 Celsius. Um, yeah, we also add a pressure measurement to uh, look at fission gas release in pile. And uh, we have some samples uh, buffered. As many of you uh, probably know is that uh, if you, uh, in Oak Ridge, they also already did salt buffering, a bit of reduction of the salt to certain uh, UF4 over UF3 ratio. And if you do that, then your uh, uh, corrosion levels go down significantly. Also, the sensitivity to tellurium is uh, much uh, larger, uh, smaller. So. Uh, in parallel, we're working on a, on a much simpler radiation, simply a batch, batches of uh, nickel-based alloys, uh, all related to Hastelloy N. So we have the, the, the Chinese version from CNAP, we have uh, Hastelloy N from Haines. Also, uh, the Czech uh, produce uh, moniker, and we asked uh, uh, the people from Comtesh in the Czech Republic also to make uh, a batch of the Russian alloy. It's a small modification of the existing one. So we have different grades which are quite comparable, and we will test them at 650 and 750 Celsius for up to a certain amount of uh, helium uh, production. Oh, yeah. That's, if you are non-technical, then uh, this may, does not make sense, I guess. But um, nickel-based alloys are sensitive to helium embrittlement, and we are in particularly uh, interested in this uh, helium embrittlement phenomenon. And we will use uh, 316 as a reference material to see what happens to the, to the 360. Um, SAGA is the salt radiolysis test. Not so much to say about it. I think uh, we will put salts in a, in a gamma field and uh, measure uh, pressure over time to look for a uh, buildup of fluorine gas pressure. That's it. So, uh, in summary, we are developing uh, irradiation capabilities and uh, looking at um, getting information to mitigate uh, risks and also to, uh, to see what tests we have to do to qualify materials for the molten salt reactor. Uh, I tried to follow a little bit the, the discussion with regulators um, because it's very important in what is exactly asked from these materials uh, if you want to do a qualification. So we are all looking what comes out of the discussion. Um, but I think we will be ready to, uh, to help with that. So, thanks. So Ralph did a great job of finishing on time. So we have time for a couple questions. Um, I haven't seen any chloride salts. Uh, are you not interested in chloride salts at this point? The, the interest in fluorides is mostly because uh, the, the, the background is there from Oak Ridge, so we, it, would, it helped us get started. There's no reason why we couldn't do the same for chloride salts. So, yeah, you don't see it yet, but um, we have to see what to do with the next experiment, let's say. So we are open to uh, suggestions. It depends a little bit on international collaboration. Um, who do you collaborate with and uh, where, the, where the program goes. But, um, yeah, we could do it for chloride. Yeah, it seems that the past uh, started up something Yes. Yeah. But I know exactly for which, for which reasons. Of course, our reactor is a thermal reactor. So if you are coming from a fast reactor perspective, then you say, okay, maybe the thermal spectrum is not exactly good if you want to qualify my materials, but uh, we will see. Will Energy have uh, fast reactor spectrum testing facilities? Or no. Uh, the only thing that we could do is to um, 
to, to screen off some of the thermal uh, neutrons to reduce the... And th that you would typically do if you would have high enriched fuel, which uh, would produce so much power that you would have to reduce the power, then you take down a little bit on the thermal part of the spectrum. That's possible. But a real fast spectrum uh, we cannot do. <coughs> we were hoping for you to uh, continue the HDR research r and And five years back, it was looking that you will be the next country after China to develop a solution for the world in HDR and pebble bed design. Ah. What happened? Ah, so now we're doing uh, pebble bed irradiations commercially. So. For us, we, we don't really need to do this in an R&D uh, environment anymore because we already know exactly how to do it. So uh, you can buy our services in HDR qualification. <laughs> but in, in the molten salt world, we still have to learn a bit and we are, we are working on that. So, but, um, you were also testing uh, molybdenum alloys, say in one or two, I forgot which one it was, uh, but uh, can you say something about why you're testing these molybdenum? We wanted to do that, but in the end we... Um, decided to stick to uh, the Hastelloy N family to get a bit more concentration of uh, information. Of course, molybdenum alloys are very, I mean, you have to go there, I think, if you want to go to higher temperatures above 700 something degrees Celsius, then you are forced to go to something like a molybdenum alloy. Or, um, and I think that it will behave very nicely because we have some experience with molybdenum based alloys in other contexts. So we think it would be good, but uh, manufacturability is very bad. So I don't think n many people are really interested in it simply because manufacturing is so, so tough. That is. Uh, oh, chicken egg. Yeah, did. Yeah. All right. Let's thank our speaker again.